Many people who once enjoyed the Harry Potter books and films don't even know that there is a sequel to the story they liked. However, it came in the form of a play, and its plot quality was so poor that the cursed child is dismissively called a fake and fanfic, which has nothing in common with the original story. You could overlook The Cursed Child if J.K. Rowling had not been listed as the author of this story, considering how much attention Rowling paid to details in her seven books. It is strange that she allowed such a mediocre plot to be enacted on stage. Although the play has its merits, even the most dedicated Harry Potter fans cannot ignore the weakest and sometimes silly things in the plot. Let's take a closer look. Enjoy the show. Hermione became the Minister of Magic. Hermione Granger is one of the best characters in Harry Potter. She is intelligent, hardworking, and generally considered the most gifted witch of her generation. In The Cursed Child, her career ended at one of the highest posts in the magical community, the Minister of Magic. But it's strange that Hermione even reached this chair. In her time, she rejected Rufus Scrimgeour's offer to take a position in the Ministry, wanting to do something good for the world, and, given the girl's outstanding talent, she was more than capable of taking on many different roles and tasks that would better fit her goal than a high post in the Ministry. Another Prophecy Prophecies are one of the weakest clichés in fantasy, but at least the prophecy from The Order of the Phoenix had an adequate backstory. In The Cursed Child, there's another prophecy now about Voldemort's return, but it just came out of nowhere. In the final part of the third act, Harry, Hermione, Ron, Ginny and Draco explore Delphi's room, hoping to discover the truth about this mysterious girl. They quickly find a written prophecy about Voldemort's return, and right after that, the third act ends without any explanation of its origin. Harry became a terrible father. Harry's parenting skills were just awful. Even before Albus attended Hogwarts, he was under enormous pressure simply because of his name. To name a son after the greatest wizard of all time is, to put it mildly, rather thoughtless. Also, in the midst of a heated argument, Harry declared that he did not want Albus to be his son. To top it all off, he forbade Albus from associating with Scorpius Malfoy, his only school friend, and even handed the Marauder's Map over to Minerva McGonagall, so she could watch his son and prevent such meetings. Considering Harry is a noble and brave character, such actions contradict the very essence of his nature. Moreover, he spent his entire childhood not just without parents, but without relatives, so it's strange that he was so cold to his own children. Time Turners The Prisoner of Azkaban was an amazing book. But the use of the time-turner introduced so many plot holes that J.K. Rowling hastily patched them up in The Order of the Phoenix, deciding to destroy all time-turners. For some strange reasons, the cursed child not only decided to bring back the concept of time-turners, but also went even further with it. They did not explain to us at all, but Theodore Knott created two time-turners under the direction of Lucius Malfoy. They could not only travel back many years in time, but also return to the future. The only difference from the old time-turners, you could spend no more than five minutes in the past. To further confuse the narrative, the cursed child introduced several alternative timelines, and much of the narrative resembles a parody of Back to the Future, Albus and Scorpius's manipulations with the Triwizard Tournament. Time travels by Albus and Scorpius abound with ridiculous plot twists, including their interference in the Triwizard Tournament. The boys wanted to save Cedric Diggory and were sure that the best way to protect him was to prevent him from winning the tournament along with Harry, but instead of going straight to the third task, they interfered in the first two. At the first task, they somehow disarmed Cedric through Expelliarmus, and by an astonishing coincidence, none of the students or staff noticed a red beam of light hitting Cedric. Their manipulations with the second task are even stranger. 
they somehow got gillyweed, crawled through a pipe in Moaning Myrtle's lair, made their way through it to the lake, and there attacked Cedric. The more you think about all this, the more absurd the boy's actions seem. Cedric Diggory became a Death Eater. Albus and Scorpius did manage to protect Cedric, however, with one small but. For some reason, his defeat in the Triwizard Tournament broke him so much that in one of the alternative realities, he became a Death Eater and dealt with Neville Longbottom. As a result, Nagini, one of the Horcruxes, was not destroyed and therefore Voldemort remained alive. But the thing is, Cedric was a very decent person, and his turning to the Death Eater's side just makes no sense. Even having lost, Cedric would have been happy for Harry, and he had many friends, acquaintances and acquaintances who would not have turned away from him and would not have allowed him to be offended. Timely message from Draco about a spare time-turner. I think this is the worst of all plot conveniences in The Cursed Child. After numerous trips to the past and several alternative realities, Albus and Scorpius find themselves locked in 1981 without the possibility of returning to the present. They send a message to the future using Harry's blanket and a substance known as Demiguise Draft. This is already quite far-fetched, but the story goes even further when Draco, coincidentally, has a spare time-turner. This is followed by a weak explanation related to Theodore Knott and Draco's father, which raises more questions than it answers. Considering how naturally the plots of the original stories developed, such an artificial plot twist looks pale and weak. Delphi, Voldemort and Bellatrix's daughter. Throughout The Cursed Child, Delphi was surrounded by an aura of mystery. As the narrative developed, it became increasingly obvious that she was hiding something bigger, and at the end of the third act, it was revealed that she was the daughter of Voldemort and Bellatrix. What? Considering Voldemort was conceived as an almost inhuman character, his decision to become a father just doesn't make sense. Even if Voldemort's physiology was close to human, he was about 70, and Bellatrix was around 45. The likelihood of pregnancy under such circumstances is close to zero. Why Rowling did not immediately reject this idea is a mystery.